Good morning. This is Pastor Bob. So good to have you here today in this really hot day outside. Just joking. But uh, what we're what we're talking about here is uh, spiritual discipline and the spiritual discipline of the day of submission. And we're using this great book, Celebration of Discipline, and Richard Foster as a template for it. And I hope that you'll, uh, if you don't have it, you'll go to the Christian bookstore and, and get a copy of it. But, uh, you know, we, we're disciplined in a lot of different ways, aren't we? in our lives. Uh, we, we discipline physically, we work out, we try to stay in shape, we discipline mentally with studies and academic and reading. But God calls us to be spiritually disciplined. And this is a tough one, submission. It's submission to God to do what he wants you to do. And that's the question I want to ask when you start. Will you do what God tells you to do if he does, if he tells you to do it? And a lot of us know what God is calling us to do but we're not doing it. I love uh, the words that he says and starting in this chapter, Christ is calling us to lay down the terrible burden of needing to get our own way. Isn't that the, what we do? We want what we want. We don't care about whatever. We are called to give up our own will to be subject to Christ. Christ challenges us in uh, throughout all of his teachings, of course, but in Matthew 5, 44, Listen to this. How do we take this seriously? Do we do it? Love your enemy. Real easy, isn't it? No, it's not easy. Pray for those who persecute. You ever been persecuted? If anyone strikes you on the cheek, give him the other cheek as well. This is a passage that's, uh, that uh, means a lot to me. And uh, in my early days, I, uh, I lived next to the church in what we call the teen house. And on Friday nights, we'd have maybe 100, 200 even Students come, we'd have motorcycle gangs come in, real tough thugs that were sniffing glue and drunk and causing fights. And on you know, one night, one of the guys named, we, we called him Big Al because he's about 6'4 and weighed about 250. Uh, and we allowed smoking at the house at the time to get people like him to come in. And he was putting out a cigarette. And as he did that for no reason, absolutely at all, he came up and hit me in my left cheek as hard as he could. And immediately the verse that came, I, I had a verse, I said, you know, the scripture tells me to give you the other cheek. But the fact is that I had broken my other cheekbone two weeks before <laughs> in a playing football with some friends. And uh, so uh, he was coming at me and he was just saying little simple phrases like, lay light or I'm going to kill you. He was been sniffing glue, he's high on alcohol. And uh, so I was trying to figure out what to do. And so I decided that I should use my wrestling talents, which I did. And I subdued him. And I was, and, and as I was subduing him, I was thinking about getting even. And what I could have done is I could have slammed him, literally his head into the fireplace, maybe killed him. I don't know. Cause I thought I had that thought after he'd struck me like he had. And instead I, I put him down. I, I said, I asked his friends to take him away or we call the police and they did. And, uh, uh, you know, being submissive in that kind of situation is hard for all of us, isn't it? To love our enemy, to pray for being those who persecute you. And uh, that's one of my stories. In, in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, Jesus says this, and he's saying this to all of us today as we're listening. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me. And what I want to say to you this morning, this, this subject, uh, submissiveness that we're talking about is humbling yourself and accepting what God is calling you to do and doing it. Will you deny yourself if, if you're following Christ? Will you bear the cross? Will you suffer for Christ's cause? Jesus goes on to say in Philippians, as quoted in Philippians 4, uh, 2, 8, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, and fulfilled his mission to die for our sins. It seems like a horrible thing for Jesus to die, but it was important for him to die because he was dying that we might be forgiven. He humbled himself. Will we humble ourselves? Will we be obedient at taking on and making sacrifices? for the kingdom of God. 
are you really willing to be submissive to God? I think a lot of people do, unless it gets hard. Uh, one of the things that, uh, it, you know, living at this house with other guys, people came in day and night. You never know who was going to come in. Some people would need a place to stay even for the evening. And we, we had all sorts of rogues and everybody else coming in. And we were just open to it. And we would witness to all these people as they came in. It was really an outstanding thing. But uh, one of the things, situations came up where a lady called the church and said, my son's dying. She was six, 86 in a wheelchair and her son's 66. And he'd been handicapped all of his life. And she says, I just need somebody to be around to help my son uh, just like go to the bathroom at night. If somebody could just come over here and stay because she knew there was a bunch of guys in this house up the street. So three of us volunteered to do that. And and uh, it was uh, a rigorous activity and they had dogs there that were peeing around the house. It was just a really weird situation. But in it, we showed the love of Christ. And this woman had been an organist and she shared this with people all over the world about these guys that came in uh, for no uh, financial uh, blessing. It is a blessing when we submit ourselves to God's will. Uh, And, and, and what God is calling us to do, and he gives us the freedom to give up our rights that we claim so dearly. Will you give up your rights to follow Jesus Christ? We see Jesus doing that every single day in submission to God, all the events of his life. The Christian life is a life of self-denial. It's a life of washing the feet of others. And I just want, to, want you to think about, are you serving other people? Are you helping them in their way? Because as we serve them, as we humble ourselves to do that, we gain uh, spiritual development, but also they gain spiritual development and strength. The Christian life is a life of self-denial. Self-denial means that we give up our freedom to give it away to another. I, uh, I love this comment, this quote <laughs> in... in in the book, uh, Jesus is calling us to lay down the terrible burden of needing to get our own way. <laughs> isn't, that a, isn't that a classic line? You know, we always need to get our own way. And with Christ and what he calls us to do, we're not always going to get our own way. Jesus lived in total submission to God. And the call that we have today in submission is for us to do that as best we can, uh, spending time with him in prayer, in his word, and listening to see what he's calling us to do. A disciple of Christ is perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none, but also is a dutiful servant, uh, serving others, all the others that might come your way. And so we're perfectly free to do whatever we will, but we are called to be servants and part of his kingdom. You know, it's time for us to put ourselves aside and begin submitting to God and to one another, submitting to God, listening to God, praying to God, asking God, what should I be doing? As we see and study scripture that we're also, we're going to Jesus and, and asking Jesus to guide us in our way each day. We're listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We're listening to what we learn in his word. So, you know, I, I just encourage you, we learn discipleship as we serve others. We minister to the helpless, and God will reward us. Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone in service? And, uh, you know, each, each year it seems like God puts some other new challenge in front of me, and I would encourage you to take those new challenges of service that you never expected. One of the first ones uh, was to love my parents uh, who, who were alcoholics and abusive. And my brother and sister and I all became Christians. And then we were called to love them and we did. And they, they absolutely did become Christians. And my mom starts teaching in Sunday school. My dad starts singing in the choir. A difference was made in our family. Maybe you're having some problems in your family. Maybe you need to find ways to serve them and help them and learn to sacrifice. 
And so uh, as, as I close off, because you could talk about this subject endlessly, are you willing to be submissive to what God calls you to be, to be submissive to? I pray that you will. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone that is listening today. And we thank you for what scripture tells us about how we are to be submissive. We're to be submissive to you, our God. We're to be submissive to scripture. We're to be submissive in our family as we grow up. We're to be submissive to our neighbors. We're to be submissive to the believing community, our church. We're also to be submissive to the broken and the despised and the world. God, thank you that you've given us the freedom to give up our rights, that we might be uh, instruments of change in our culture and society. And the Lord, the thing that we do know today as we submit to you and to submit to some tremendous challenges they could be, that you will have your will and that you will change us and make us more in the image of Christ. Bless us as we think about ways that we could be submissive to you and serve in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for tuning in today. God bless you, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.